Uh, BBC Question Time is our site, as you probably know. Text us on 83981. Uh, CFAX, page 155, will tell you what others are saying. You know all this by heart. Watching digitally, push the red button. Email us. Here's our address. But please, <laughs> but please do it, because that's what we like to do, is to stir up a bit of argument. Let's go on to a question from Conrad Free, please. Uh, good evening. Uh, there is no money left. Will that be the epitaph for New Labour and Gordon Brown? These were the, the, this was the message that Liam Byrne, the former Chief Secretary, left for his successor. Sorry, old thing, there's no money left. Well, words to that effect. Um, hmm. hmm. Caroline Flint. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was a rather stupid joke, to be honest. Um, and uh, and, uh, and I'm, sure, I'm sure Liam is uh, uh, ruined the day he did that as well. Um, the fact is, we all know, and one of the big issues in the general election campaign was the deficit and how the different parties would tackle it. Um, it is difficult. There have to be savings. We've said that. But what we had concerns about in the election was just how fast and how deep the Tories, and now the Tory Liberal Democrat coalition, would go, which might jeopardise our recovery, but also uh, put a lot more people out of work. And after the Queen's speech next week and this emergency budget, when we'll know a little bit more, because I have to say again in the coalition document, I haven't literally studied it in a huge amount of detail, but one thing that stands out to me is that there are quite a lot of spending commitments that are in this um, document as well. And we need to know more about what this coalition will do. And I can assure you that in terms of protecting frontline services and preventing our economy going backwards, uh, the Labour, as the official opposition, will be playing its part. All right. Theresa May, um, do you think he meant it? I suspect he did, and I have to say there's nothing funny about leaving this country in a situation of the worst budget deficit since the Second World War. <laughs> and and it, is, it is the central issue. It's a central issue to the coalition. We have agreement that we do need to take £6 billion, deal with the deficit, start dealing with it this year, that we do need to take £6 billion out of public spending this year. Uh, and we will be coming forward with that emergency budget. But what's absolutely clear is that it isn't just about, actually getting the economy going again isn't just about restraining public spending. It is also about ensuring that we can uh, kickstart economic growth with things like, as George Osborne has been talking about this week, um, re reducing corporation tax, trying to get companies going. Uh, I was at the launch of this document today when both George Osborne and Vince Cable were talking about the need to ensure that banks are lending again. Now, we had two different views as to how we might do that. It might be that we adopt both of those, or we'll look at which of those is going to work. But real practical ways of actually ensuring that we get this economy moving, because that is the key to being able to do what we want to do in this, uh, in this document, in this programme. But it's also the key to ensuring that we can deal with that deficit and pull this country round again and get it going in the right direction. You, sir. None of the parties have been completely truthful about these cuts that need to be made. The six billion that they're ta ta uh, talking about taking out this year is a tiny, tiny fraction of total government spending. Some people are saying it's less than 5%. So where is the money either going to be saved or where is it going to come from? You're now in government. You said before that you hadn't looked at the books. You have now. Maybe you could tell us. Min Campbell, well, you're I also in government. I, I haven't looked at the books, but I certainly concede that there are very difficult decisions to be taken. And there will have to be a balance between the expectation of growth, the necessity to raise taxes, uh, and the extent to which it's necessary to cut public expenditure. Uh, and I don't want to sound like a Jonah, but I don't think, uh, with very few exceptions, I think the possible exception of the National Health Service and international development, uh, pretty well everything is going to be on the table. And there's going to be some pain. And uh, you perhaps a right to say that the parties were not as specific in the general election campaign as they ought to have been or could have been. But there's absolutely no, no, no doubt this is going to be a very difficult time. And do you and the blame... And, 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 and the balancing of these things... Do you things. blame Labour for this? Well, Gordon Brown's um, defence always is that this was a world-wide uh, economic crisis. Do you believe him? Uh, he's right, 50%. The other 50% was caused by the fact that for the best part of 13 years, while he was Chancellor of the Exchequer, he allowed personal debt in this country to rise to £1.3 trillion. He allowed the economy to ride the wave of a housing boom. And what do you know about housing booms? Sooner or later, they come to an end. And when they come to an end, it's usually pretty painful. He's the man who said, we've abolished boom and bust, whereas the very policies he was carrying through or allowing 
to be carried through, were doing the very opposite. So I'm afraid he has to, he can get some defence, if you like, for the international situation, and he can get some credit for the speed with which he moved to get the international community together on these matters, but he has to take responsibility for the state of the economy Britain had at the time, which, uh, as a result of which, the effects on Britain were exacerbated far beyond what was okay. necessary. You, sir. I think that Liam's letter was in poor taste, and I'm sure that he will regret it for all the times he appears on the front of the Daily Telegraph. However, as a Labour Party member, I'm even more concerned about the millions of pounds that ministers appear to have signed through right in the last dying days of the last Labour yeah, right. government. And I do think that a thorough review of all public spending by the new Conservative and Liberal Democrat administration is called for. And as Caroline says, we'll see what they present at the budget. Okay. Douglas Murray. Yes, I agree with both members of the governing coalition on this one. Um, God, uh, the thing I'm is, it is, is, uh, <laughs> uh, it is, it is a, a, as Caroline said, it's a stupid joke. The problem is the joke's on us. Uh, it's us that's going to have to pick up the bill for this. Labour did spend uh, in the most disgraceful way. Uh, and particularly in those last months. And I very much hope that political blame is levelled where it should be and that the public uh, demand that to be the case. Now, uh, but we, we have to look at where we are. Uh, the gentleman in the audience is right. The political parties were not and have not been honest with the public. You quite rightly say the, 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 the uh, £6 billion cuts count, count for something like, I think it's 1% of uh, the deficit uh, uh, that we have. Um, when the emergency budget comes through, I very much hope the uh, governing coalition rises, they're going to have to massively uh, up the pressure uh, to reduce that spending. Uh, it has to be at least something like 20% cuts in every government department would be the least that you needed to get on top of this. It is true. We were not told the real facts about this. We should demand them now. All right. And, and thank you. Um, Caroline Finn, do you want to answer the point that the Labour voter up there made specifically about the amount of spending in the last year where Labour ministers had to write letters instructing the civil service? Lord Mandelson, five of them, uh, because the civil servants said this wasn't legitimate spending and they couldn't pass it. What's your comment on that? Well, first of all, civil servants quite rightly give advice to ministers and ministers have to decide. And on each of the issues that, uh, where a ministerial direction, as it's called, has taken place, ministers, Labour ministers, I'm sure, when it comes out in terms of what they were, can justify them. And I'll give you one example, if I may. The car scrappage scheme. That was one of the schemes that I understand that civil servants actually said they didn't think it should go ahead. We've just heard announcement today that car production is up, that one of the drivers to help make that happen was the car scrappage scheme. There are other uh, areas of funding, for example, of regional development in Blackpool, led by a Tory council, in Leeds, led by a Tory Liberal Democrat council, where the government over the past year was keen to make sure that whilst we do recognise we have to make cuts, and Alistair Darling's plan was to halve the deficit over the four years, we also had to keep our economy going and investing in areas to make sure as we hit recovery, and we are in recovery, we can make the most of it. So you have because no the shame worry... about the civil service no, saying you're doing you, the wrong no, thing, because which I... is what they said <laughs> no, specifically. No, what I'm saying is civil servants give advice, ministers make decisions, and they have to account for those decisions. Yeah, but you don't and have the right to let every decision, decision you make. There are specific every, decisions every that you have to do. Every ministerial direction is such, sent, I understand, to the National Audit Office. But the fact is, is that in avoiding us going from a recession into a depression, we also have to think about how we right. keep our economy going. And I have to say, banding around things about skeletons in the cupboard and everything else isn't helpful. Let them put up the examples, and Labour will actually defend them and justify why we made those choices. All right. Do you want to come back on that point? And Shannon, I'll come to you. Yes. I think that Caroline's point is well made, is that they are justified and the ministers do decide. However, that doesn't mean that ministers should be reckless in what they're doing. And that's what appears to have been happening. And what I do want to see from the budget of the coalition government is that all these will be reviewed and then to make the final decision where the money's not been finally okay. committed. Shami Chakrabarti, briefly if you would on the economy, because we're coming to something else you may want to um, speak about. At the risk of sounding repetitive, the Liam Byrne note was in an incredibly bad taste. It's, it's a schoolboy joke to him perhaps, but schools, hospitals, jobs and houses are not a joke to the rest of us. Um, yes, inevitably during an election campaign, 
um, politicians didn't want to be perhaps completely transparent about the, the, the level